Hello. In this episode, I'm going to give a quick crash course on linear regression. Um, it is uh, not deep learning, but it is part of the supervised learning that uh, usually serves as a baseline benchmark. So I feel like um, it helps to um, give a quick review on the linear regression. So here are the two things that, um, that summarizes what I want to say. So this is the slide that I want you to know. Um, and that is how to read um, tables coming out of linear regression. Sometimes your colleagues uh, may give analysis and, and the results and they do linear regression. And they usually come in the form of something looking like this in a table. Um, typically there's a dependent variable that we want to explain something. Um, and then here on the rows, uh, there are many variables that we want to explain this by, isn't it? Um, um, and uh, typically, so here, so we are trying to explain here, for example, the log of revenue with respect to weather shock. Okay? So whatever that variable is, uh, so how much does the weather shock impacts or correlated with uh, the log revenue? And the result is, and what's important here is that it comes with two numbers typically. Um, the first one is the parameter estimate. So this is how much um, the log revenue is related to the weather shock. It's sort of like the sensitivity. So one unit of weather shock increasing, it uh, decreases, the log revenue decreases by 0 0.0161 is in this case. Okay? So this is the estimate. So um, how it depends on or correlation, if you will. And there typically is another number that's paired with this. It comes in a parenthesis and it's called standard errors. Okay? So, and that's, how much uh, we do trust this number by, is it? How much is it a uh, variable, uncertain or noised? Um, and so, and if this number is very small relative to this number, um, then this number is probably a meaningfully large number. If this noise is very large, then we don't know it's just a flu or not, isn't it? And how do we decide whether this, uh, whether we should take this minus 0 0.0161 seriously? Um, here it is. We call what they call a t-statistics, the ratio of this parameter estimate divided by the standard error. If that number exceeds in absolute value, if that number exceeds two, then take this number seriously. It is not a flu. It is something different from zero, where the shock will have a relationship with bulk of revenue. Okay. Okay, so that is all true with all the other variables, for example. So when um, your staff runs a regression on something on the other variables and they come in, each come into pairs, um, take the ratio, see whether you wanna believe this number or not. Uh, the other number that's very important is R squared. So one could run a regression okay, and, um, and, and do a job and explain this variable, uh, but then, how good was this model? Um, and one of the measure is what we call R squared. And what that does is that it, it ranges from between zero and one. And um, what it tells is that how much does it explain more than just simply looking at the average? For example, in this regression, which um, regressed the log revenue on the weather shock, um, um, the, you could just take the average of the log revenue and okay, here's a representative number, the average of log revenue. Beyond that, having to go through the hassle of running a linear regression, how much does it explain more? If it's close to one, it explains a lot more. If it's perfectly one, it perfectly explains the data. If it's zero, then just looking at the average or running the regression is the same. Okay. okay. So these are the two things I want to know. T-statistics, to check whether the variable has a relationship, and R squared. Okay, so let's go a little bit more detail. So that um, the previous slide was the punchline. So now um, a regression, what it does, isn't it? So for example, we want to know the relationship between the GPA and parent's income. How much does the parent income relate to GPA? And here are the individual dots of these points, okay? Um, and one of the ideas is that maybe we want to, rather than memorizing all these data points, which can be a lot, um, maybe we just want to draw a line and just having to remember the line. The line represents the dots. So 
And then the question is, how should we draw the line? We can draw it like this, we can draw it like this, like this, like this. Which one is the line that we want to pick? Isn't it? Presumably something that goes through all these dots reasonably. But what is reasonable? Long time ago, people figured it out that one reasonable way of doing it is that, well, we pick a line and then take the distances here, like um, I guess in absolute values, uh, or square them, and people chose to square it. So take the distance and square it, and the line, um, the chosen line that basically has the smallest amount of these squared errors um, is a reasonable guess. And that's what least square estimation does. Okay. And then comes the question, okay, so in a regression, we said that, okay, if the um, parameter estimate divided by standard error, the ratio is larger than two, then this is um, not a fluke, not zero. It's something meaningful number. Where does that come from? Well, in this estimate, <clears throat> and let's have it zero centered. Um, what it's saying is that if a number is in between here in the Bezier curve, it's probably closer to this mean, like zero on average, isn't it? Um, but if it's very large, like um, far, far away in the Bezier curve, then it's probably very positive or very negative number, isn't it? And in a normal distribution, the usual Bezier curve, um, um, people usually use like 1.96, that's uh, like, 2.5%, 2.5% worth of the possibilities. I'm adding that together, a 5%, we call them p-value. And, um, um, and, and that's where um, sort of, if we know the true, let's say in, in, in our case, we had the revenue, isn't it? If we knew the true distribution and the standard deviation of it, then we would have a real normal distribution curve and then 1.96 would be our cutoff. Okay? And what that is, is that it's actually scaled, meaning um, you subtract the average of that distribution and divide it by the standard deviation. And the scaled number being 1.96 is um, um, an exceeding above on top of bottom will be a very significantly large or small number. So that's how it comes. So what is 9.96, not two, isn't it? Why? Because we actually don't know the true, what the true underlying distribution of the revenue and such would be. So we kind of guess it out of the data points. We use these data points and kind of guess what the real standard deviation is of our distribution. So once you do a guess rather than using a true standard deviation, then it's sort of similar, but slightly different bell-shaped curve called T distribution. And there, it turns out that subtracting the mean and the standard deviation, I mean, the guest standard deviation is called T-statistics. And this extreme of the Bezier curve, much larger than two or much larger than minus two, um, would be um, about um, total 5% of possibility being not centered around near zero, but um, very extreme values, which means that the estimate, for example, here, if it exceeds two, means that it's very extreme of the top or the high or the bottom tail of the region, which means it's a very extremely large number. Okay. So that's where the two comes from. Okay. And, um, and in our case, for example, the parameter estimate that we had, okay, subtract the average, the mean, um, uh, we are testing against zero. So is, it, is that uh, slope that we estimate from the regression, is it different from zero? Okay. And scale it by the guest uh, standard estimation, the noise in the data. If that ratio is larger than two, then it means that it's either in this tail or this tail, meaning it's a very significantly different number from a zero, meaning the regression coefficient uh, and the relationship with the dependent variable is very meaningfully large or small number. Okay. okay, going back to our example of the GPA, remember we had this GPA example? Okay. So I actually um, ran the actual linear regression and actually I ran a regression with an intercept, a constant and a slope GPA. So you get a constant estimate here, 1.375 and the slope is 0 0.12 per thousand dollar. Per thousand dollar increase, the GPA increases by uh, 0 0.12. Okay. 
Okay, so that's um, how um, it explains here okay? uh, with the average of three. And the R square uh, also is uh, probably a very meaningfully large uh, here. Okay, here. Okay? So the R square is explains about 78% of the variation data, which means that the average is three, GPA is three, but by having to draw this line and individually um, at each uh, parent income yeah, value, um, trying to predict something, it's not a flat line at three, it is actually something that's actually mean something. So uh, having to run a regression helps you 78% times more, um, well, a percent more than just looking at the average. Okay. okay, so that is about the linear regression. There are some cautions that I want to give with the linear regression, as useful as it is. Um, the first thing is that um, the statistical significance and economic significance that you could have a linear regression that have a very superly great uh, um, statistics. For example, the parent income right now is 0 0.12 per thousand dollar increase. But what if the estimate came out to be like this? The ratio of this divided by the standard error. So this is the estimate, it's the standard error. The T statistics is still 4.6. But look at this number, per thousand dollar increase, the GPA increases by 0. 0.00012. In real life, it probably doesn't matter, isn't it? In this case, what we are calling this is that um, the statist it is a statistically significant estimate, but it's economically insignificant. It just doesn't mean much in real life. Okay? So be careful and don't be too enthusiastic even when you get a statistical significance. Uh, because you need to also check the economic significance. Also, there's a causality issue, meaning that uh, we do find a significant uh, relationship between the GPA and parent income, isn't it? The T statistics is larger than two. Uh, but that doesn't mean that a parent having higher income caused the student to have higher GPA. It is possible that higher parent income led them, the student, to buy tutors and all this kind of preparation and nice textbooks and references and get a high GPA. That is possible, of course. That's probably the story that um, many like to believe. Uh, but also, there's the other story that, well, the student got a high GPA and parent got happy by this and work harder and make a lot more money. So it can go also the other way around, isn't it? So, and the linear regression does not tell which way the direction of this explanation goes. Okay? So to do this, you need to have more sophisticated, sophisticated statistical techniques. Uh, um, I'll just name it here right now, instrumental variable synthetic control and difference and differences are some of them. And we'll look um, in future episodes, some of these. Thank you for watching this video.